What's poppin' everybody? Uh, it's your boy Brandon Leak here, and this is something new that I'm doing. Um, something I'm trying this year is just making things that I, um, I kind of just feel called to make. And so something that I think will be good for my own health and well-being, as well as something that I think will um, bring a lot of glory back to God for all the beauty and wonder that he's brought to my life is uh, something that most church folk already know, a testimony. And most people think of a testimony as a singular instance of, you know, hey, I go up, you know, in front of this congregation of people and I, I share, you know, the different things that God has done in my life uh, in this one singular spot. I'm gonna break this into a series where I'm going to go into detail about the different things and the different ways that God has most certainly shown up and provided for me, for my family, for the visions that I've had, all sorts of things. So, and none of these are going to be in particular chronological order. I have, you know, a rough memory of, you know, the myriad of different ones that me and my family have gone through. But uh, yeah, I figured, um, Probably one of the best places I could start would be college, despite the fact that I have so many others that happened earlier in my life. But college is like one of my most notable testimony times. So let's talk about it. I went to a very small private Christian school called Simpson University. A uh, very white institution, as most Christian universities are, they're placed in predominantly white locations. It's, you know, racism the whole nine, right? Now, not to say that the school is racist now, but the, you know, the roots of a lot of these things lie in this stuff. So, but regardless, we can talk about that later. Um, I was going to school in Reading. I didn't want to go to Simpson in the beginning. I went to Simpson because I was like, hey, I'm finna go to this small school go be on the basketball team, become the star basketball player, and then I'm finna transfer out of here after like a year or two, and then go play at like a division one school that I really wanna go play at, like UC Davis, or like UCLA or UOP or something, right? And so, um, yeah, I get to the school, I'm like real hesitant in the beginning, and I'm just like, man, dog, like, ain't no black people here, this is really weird. I go into you know the chapel services and there's all these you know white people up there being like, uh, and like this one guy playing a guitar. And if you've ever been to like black churches, you know that that is not how black church goes. No, we got like 30 people in the choir. We got like you know people. And I mean like it's it's a very different experience. And so for myself in the beginning. And you know, some people wouldn't attribute this to it, but like I had a very racial, a very racialized slash racist view of this, where I was like, man, this is that cold stuff, dog. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but as the time went on, I realized what God was doing with me during the course of this time was really remolding me and reshaping me to be able to see like, A, different cultures and different people worship me in different ways. It doesn't invalidate how they do it. But that's not the testimony. I go through my freshman year, I play basketball, that kind of hesitancy to buy in now is beginning to fade away. It's finally starting to wear off. I'm now looking ex I'm looking forward to the next year. I'm looking forward to showing up sophomore year. I know my friends. I know who I'm gonna be rooming with. Basketball, I, I'm, I'm getting better. I know the drills to work on. I know who's gonna be on the roster next year. I'm like, dog, we, it's gonna be up for this upcoming school year. And then summer happens. And my friends who were supposed to be my roommates were Jason Camacho, Joey Jergo and Andrew. Jason says, hey, I'm not coming back, y'all. And I'm like, what? Come on, Jason, like you, you can't leave, you can't leave the group behind. And then Joey a week later is like, yeah, I'm not coming back either. And I'm like, oh God, I can't do it can't just be me and Andrew. And Andrew's like, oh yeah, I'm not going back either. 
And then it just leaves me solo, looking forward to returning back to school. And I'm like, you know what? I may not have the roommates I want, but I, I'll have the basketball that I'm looking forward to. And I'm training, we're getting through the summer, and it's about like, I'd say four, four or five weeks before the semester is about to start, I get a call from Simpson. And they're like, hey, we don't know if you received our letters or not, but uh, you won't be able to attend fall semester until you resolve your balance for, uh, for your semester. And I look, at, I look at the phone and I'm like, huh? balance, what are you talking about? And they say, oh yeah, you, you must not have gotten the letters. So you owe $9,000 for your fall semester. I'm like, $9,000, what are you talking about? Because I'm up. At this point in my life, I'm back in Stockton. It's my first summer back after college. I moved away from my family in terms of like, my mom was married to a man and you know, I, I couldn't be in that household anymore. So I left and then my mom and my brother then left with me. My uncle then moves into the house as well. And then my grandma moves into the house. So we're talking about a two bedroom home with one, two, three, four adults and a child. All right, it's getting crowded in here. We broke. And so I'm like, oh my God, $9,000. Um, all right, cool. Well, I know you guys do payment plans. So like, what's that look like? How, how can I get on one of these payment plans to be able to, you know, make the payments? And they're like, yeah, well, you know, the longest payment plan that we have would be 10 months. Huh? I started doing the math and I'm like, that's $900 a month. There is no way that my family nor I could afford to spend 900 extra dollars a month, we get to the end of checks with like 100, 200 dollars at the end of a check. And usually that still needed to be put somewhere because something went wrong in the month. So now I go into hustle mode. I go into grind mode. I'm like, all right, I talk to my mom about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm about to, you know, we got the lawnmower. I'm about to go holla at the neighbors, see whose lawn I can cut. Um, I'm going to talk to the church, see if anybody, you know, might be willing to help a brother out, leave a donation or something for the boy. I'm, I'm about to exhaust all options. Key thing here, I never pray about it. I don't pray. I just go do work. And you'll see why that's important later. About a week or two goes by of me hustling and grinding. I probably made like $800. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, dog, I'm never going to get this money. And my family and I are all in the living room talking, hanging out. And I, I think either my grandma, my mom or my uncle had asked like, hey, so like, you know, how's it coming with, you know, the, the money for the semester? And at this point, I've already been internally fuming over this situation. And I just, I let loose. I start yelling, not cussing, but screaming. And I'm like, this is how it's freaking going. I got $800 and I need to make another 8,200 in order for me to get to the God dang school that I didn't even want to go to in the first place. And then like, I, I leave the room, my uncle comes in and he's like, Hey man, you need to chill. You need to chill. And I apologize. And he's like, dog, have you prayed about it? And I'm like, nah. Man, I, I ain't prayed about it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't. And he looks me in the eyes and he says, Brandon, pray. And at this moment, I probably said one of my most honest prayers I had ever said. One second. <laughs> Sorry, the AC turned on, but at this point, I've probably, I'm probably in this moment saying one of the most honest prayers I've ever said to God. And I'm like, God, 
I'm at this school that I didn't want to be at in the first place, but I felt like you told me to go there. I felt like you called me there for a reason. I, I signed up to, I, I'm finally buying in to this place. And then now the friends I have are all gone. Now the, 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 the money that I'm supposed to have to be able to be there isn't there anymore. And, and I don't understand it. Just, just don't, don't give me something that's finally fun, that's finally beautiful, and then just snatch it away from me. Like, why would you do that to me, God? Like this, I don't understand. I didn't wanna be there. And then you told me to stay there. And now I'm committed to it and you're making it more difficult to be around. And then I say, God, if you want me there, provide for it. Provide for it. Make it known. Like the, you know, the Isra like the Israelites, you know, waited every morning for manna in the wilderness. I need money. I'm in the wilderness. And then I walked away. I walked away and Next couple days, I just kind of sulk. Don't really do much. I don't hustle, I don't go grind. I just kind of like, I'm kind of resigned to the fact that I'm just not gonna be going back to college. And I'm like, yo man, I'm gonna need to find myself a regular job, figure out what I'm gonna do. And then uh, I get a phone call three days later from a group who's like, hey Brandon, I don't know if you remember us, but you won a scholarship from us that we will give you $1,500 uh, every year for all four years. And so you need to send us uh, an address to send this check to. And I'm like, oh, let's go. I'm like, 1500 plus the 800 I've already made. I'm like, that's at least a couple months worth of payment right there. And now I might be able to get on the payment plan, boy. So that way I can get myself an on-campus job, you know, get it working. And I'm like, all right, let's work it. And then I, I give them the address, I get off the phone, and then I get a call from Simpson like maybe an hour or two later. And they're like, hey, Brandon, just wanted to let you know, we got a check here for you. And I'm like, oh man, that came in fast. And I like, wait talking about. I'm like, yeah, I just talked to the scholarship group. You know, they had a they had a check for me because I was a uh, yeah, like it, it comes every year. I had it last year too. And they're like, are you talking about this money? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we we haven't received that yet. We uh we actually re renegotiated your financial situation, seeing how your your mom and your stepdad split up, and and we've come to the conclusion that. You know, we can't award you the whole 9,000, but we can give you 7,500. In my head, I'm like, excuse me? How much? 7,500. And once again, I start doing the math and I'm like, Yo, there's a check in the mail for 1,500. And they look at me and they say, they don't look at me, but on the phone, figuratively, right? They're like, oh, since it's already been credited to your account from last year, and we know that the money has already come once, we'll credit it now as if it's already here, and then when the check comes, we'll just deposit it. So yeah, you have your $9,000 for the semester. We look forward to seeing you. And I sat back and I'm like, God, thank you. And then I start jumping for joy. I'm excited, I'm hype. My family's like, yo, what happened? What happened, what happened? I'm like, the money showed up. The money showed up. And then I look at my mom and she's smiling. I look at my grandma, she's smiling. And then I look at my uncle. And he just looks at me and he's like, I told you, I told you that I won't abandon you. And I remember this moment so vividly because it was one of the, sh the stark moments that shifted my spiritual perspective 
because for myself, I was attending Simpson for the sole fact that I wanted to play ball. I didn't really attend chapels like that. I was trying to be like all the rest of the other athletes, but God had a different calling for me. And in that, I resigned myself to the fact after that moment that like, hey God, you brought me here. You kept me here. I'm yours. So I became a prayer leader on my floor. I became an RA. Um, I started running a poetry club on campus or an art club, I should say, and doing these open mics. And we'll talk about CTM as another testimony another time. But man, God showed up so beautifully. And it's crazy to think that in my desperation, when I leaned on God finally, God said, I've just been waiting for you to come. I've just been waiting for you to come to the party, son. I have not just this for you, but I have excess for you. So if you're sitting on the other side of the screen and you're wondering, can Jesus do things for you? Can Jesus really meet you where you need Jesus to meet you at? I'm telling you right now, Jesus most certainly can. God, I pray for anybody who's under the sound of my voice that if they are questioning, if they are wondering, if they are hurting, if they are longing, if they are searching, if they are joyous but empty, that they find you and they see the true fulfillment of joy and fullness in you. Amen. Catch y'all in the next go round. Um, I don't know what story I'll tell next time, so no previews, but love y'all.